Hello friends, let's discuss uh, current affairs. Here's the first question. The National Javelin Day celebrated on dash across the country to commemorate the winning of an Olympic gold medal by Neeraj Chopra in Javelin. That's Neeraj Chopra up there. Um, you know, uh, he won the, uh, the Olympic gold medal last year on 7th August. And in that, uh, you know, good memory, we celebrated the National Javelin Day. So, um, what about Neera Chopra? What should we know about Neera Chopra? See, Neera Chopra, you could write this a bit, couple of points about him. Uh, Major Dhyan Chand Award, Major Dhyan Chand, Dhyan Chand Khel Ratna Award, 2021. That's first point. Second point, Major Dhyan Chand Khel Ratna Award, 2021. Second point, um, First Asian to win, first Asian to win Olympic gold medal, first Asian to win Olympic gold medal in Javelin, in Javelin. Next, first Indian, first Indian athlete, track and field athlete, first Indian track and field athlete. To win gold, to win Olympic gold, to win Olympic gold. Next, second Indian, second Indian to win a medal at, to win a medal at the World Athletics Championship. at the World Athletics Championship in brackets first verse first verse Anju Bobby George Anju Bobby B-O-B-B-Y Bobby, Bobby George G-E-O-R-G-E -E, George okay so last year even the Olympic gold medal and that's at the Tokyo Summer Olympics and this year he won the silver medal if you could write this um, one silver medal one W O N one silver medal at the 2022 at the 2022 World Athletics Championship World Athletics Championship at where was this held at Eugene in the American state of Oregon Eugene Oregon this happened recently okay Chal. Hmm. you know August 6th is um, Hiroshima day on this day that's now August 6th on August 6 1945 the first atomic bomb nicknamed little boy was dropped on Hiroshima little boy little boy Hiroshima that was the name of the atomic bomb okay this is 1945 1949 um, bomb named fat man was dropped on nagasaki nagasaki fat man nagasaki three days after the atomic bomb on hiroshima was dropped uh, um, another atomic bomb nicknamed the fat man was dropped on um, nagasaki yeah you know um, if you look at August 15th uh, August 15th is important primarily um, for the reason that India became independent uh, or you know from British rule in the in 1947 on August 15 two other nations received independence one was South Korea the other is uh, Democratic Republic of Congo DRC so the DRC, the Democratic Republic of Congo, South Korea, 
and India received independence. Received independence. I'm sorry, guys. These days, we've been using a lot of screen, and that's leading to burning of eyes. You would have experienced it yourself. Anyway, according to an UNCTAD report, uh, what's UNCTAD? UNCTAD is the United Nations Conference on Trade and Development. I repeat, United Nations Conference on Trade and Development. On Trade and Development. Head office, Geneva. Geneva, which is in Switzerland. And it's headed by Rebecca Greenspan. Rebecca Greenspan. She is from Costa Rica. Costa Rica. Okay. Huh. So this um, UNCTAD came out with a report on cryptocurrencies. What percentage of the population owns digital currencies like cryptocurrencies? So they found that the world leader was Ukraine. 12.7% of Ukrainian population own cryptocurrency. Okay. Second was Russia. Uh, almost 12%. Russia was number 2, 11.9%, so 12%. Okay. Third was Venezuela. Third was, it's in the order, these uh, rankings are already there. 2 and 3. Venezuela, 10.3%. Uh, 10.3%. So a little over one tenth of Venezuelan population owns cryptocurrencies. Now, India ranks 7th, India ranks 7th and uh, the India, you know, that would be 7.3% of India's population. 7.3% of India's population own cryptocurrency. See, what is the significance? When I saw this report, in the, in the first thing that came to my mind about the top three players, Ukraine, Russia and Venezuela, is that all of them are facing economic trouble, serious economic trouble. In the case of when Ukraine and you know, uh, in the in the case of all three actually, there is tr political trouble as well. There is a lot of political trouble and a uh, lot of economic problems. You look at Ukraine, people are not certain of the current times and they, are, they have no idea what the future could hold for them. So there is a lot of uncertainty in Ukraine, so is the case with Russia. In the case of Russia, there have been imposing sanctions, uh, you know, massive sanctions, imposing very big sanctions, massive sanctions um, brought in by the West uh, against Russian entities. That has put, a const that has put considerable you know, pressure on Russian assets, like you know, their currency, their private assets, you know, gold and all. So a lot of Russians to now hold cryptocurrency primarily to avoid the uh, the dangers of losing their currency losing value so this is how you need to look at it okay now what about venezuela venezuela has the highest inflation in the world for several years now venezuela has had more than officially 3000 officially 800% but unofficially the inflation, according to the IMF, the inflation is 5,500%. So Venezuela has the world's highest inflation rate. 5,500% is what the IMF says. Okay. So you think about it. You know, four fives, five, 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 five percent of inflation. In India, we have 12%, which means a 12% rise in the average price level. In the case of Venezuela, it's a little over 5,500%. So, the, your currency would be like, you know, uh, would be pretty valuable in, see, you're, you're, you have money in your pocket, rupees. You would be a billionaire if you have, let's say, 1000 rupees in your pocket, you would be a multi-billionaire in Venezuela at the exchange value. Okay. So, you need to be careful about this. The top three would be Ukraine, 12.7%. 
Russia 11.9% and you, uh, Venezuela with 10.3%. Given the lot, given the uncertainty, economic turmoil, political instability, um, these the people here are holding. You know they can't hold gold because there's it's in short supply in those parts. At the same time, you know uh, their currency and real estate would be eaten up by inflation. So they're putting money in cryptocurrencies, which of course is a dangerous you know idea. But then people believe that that's still better than other avenues, other investments. Okay. See, when you say 7.3% of India's population, that's still more than the top-ranked countries, total population. Okay? Absolute population, see, you may say that Ukraine has 12.7% adoption, but then what is Ukrainian population? You look at the base, pretty small. Okay? I'll just give you the capitals. Uh, maybe in the case of Venezuela, let me discuss only Venezuela, because usually we discuss the rest here. Venezuela's capital is Caracas, that's a capital, Caracas. The prime the president is Nicolas Maduro. And the currency is Bolivia. Bolivar. Sorry. Bolivar. B-O-L-I-V-A-R. Hmm. So some places you will find um, the spelling is Boliviano. Don't worry too much about it. Okay, Bolivar. You may find this spelling also. Boliviano. Both are fine. According to Antarctic report, with 7.3% of its population owning digital currency in 2021, India ranked seventh. We discussed this. Okay. Manila city, which is a tribal dominated region, became India's first fully functional literate district. Manila is in Madhya Pradesh. This is a predominantly tribal place and the people here were facing a lot of hardship because of the, the illiteracy, because of, you know, being able to identify the written word. So a lot of people lost their money to banking fraudsters. Okay. So to avoid that kind of situation from repeating itself, uh, they approached the Mandala district authorities who were the, the chief collector, the, you know, got in touch with um, the school departments, okay, with some NGOs and, um, you know, the Department of uh, Education. All of them came together to teach, to train, uh, to teach other the ordinary people of Mandala, um, you know, some basic skills which have helped them become functionally literate. So who is a functionally literate person? You could write this. This is a definition, so it would help actually. Functional literacy. Functional literacy. Underline that, right? All adults, all adults can perform basic, can perform basic tasks, TASKS tasks, like read, like reading, comma, counting and writing their own names and writing their own names, writing their own names. That's functional literacy. When you say functional knowledge of the English language, you means you can converse. You may not be fluent, but you have a working knowledge of the English language. You have functional knowledge of the English language. Similarly, Functional literacy would mean people able to be able to read what's there in the banking statements or something else, somewhere else. Um, should be would be able to write basic stuff and of course um, read the numbers, count you know the numbers. Reading the numbers means what numbers are there on the screen and all that on the on the papers. This would help them identify fraudsters and stay away from such dangerous conmen. With an aim to facilitate and support startups, which bank launches first uh, dedicated startup, um, you know, uh, startup dedicated branch in Koramangala, Bengaluru, SBI, State Bank of India, India's largest bank. What about Punjab National Bank? The CEO is Atanu Kumar, 
you could write this no 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 i think punjab national bank na it is atul kumar goel i am so sorry atul kumar goel that is for punjab national bank bank of india it is atanu kumar das atanu kumar das okay atanu kumar das union bank of india a lady named mani maikalai indus ind bank is a private bank sumant katpaliya is a ceo sumant katpaliya The Institute for Development and Research in Banking Technology has designed and deployed the Dash or Interbank ATM transactions. This is a stock question, not current affair. National Financial Switch. So, what is the NFS? You could write this. NFS is the largest network of ATMs. what is the full form of atm automated teller machine automated means programmed in this case teller the person who in a bank you have a teller uh, who would uh, tell you details of your account and all that stuff so machine does all these functions so automated teller machine so that's the nfs you could also write one more thing uh, we wrote that it's a largest network of shared atms shared atms uh, as of today there are 2.4 lakh atms 2.47 make it 2.4 lakh atms okay next point designed comma developed and deployed by and deployed by idrbt idrbt it's their institute for development in research in banking technology this is a hyderabad based body owned by the rbi okay by the idrbt last point run by nfs is run by the national payments corporation of india the national payments corporation of india the national payments corporation of india okay hmm po is point of sale terminal where the sale happens that's called the point of sale terminal okay rupee is basically uh, you know the brand owned by ncpi okay what are the current monetary limit of the cases handled in the integrated ombudsman scheme rupees 20 lakh what is the integrated ombudsman scheme earlier there were three ombudsman schemes so the government has now amalgamated amalgamated all three into one called the ios integrated ombudsman scheme you could take the simple definition okay underline integrated ombudsman scheme right resolve differences or resolve grievances grievances g r i e v a n c e s resolve grievances about deficiency in banking service about defi deficiency in banking service next single point of reference single point of contact or reference single point of contact or reference to file complaints to file complaints comma submit documents submit documents and track complaint track complaints track complaints so what's the status of the complaint that's you can track last point 
brought out under brought out under brought out under one nation one nation one ombudsman scheme one nation one ombudsman scheme okay yeah so any kind of grievance that you might have against a bank that they have not taken care of your interest your banking interest and all you can file a case with the ombudsman okay which state recently unveiled the draft of its solar energy policy with an aim to develop 16000 megawatts of renewable energy capacity by 2027 um uttar pradesh see i have taken this um, data from the web and here it is in 19 sorry in 2010 that's about it you know in the beginning of the last decade we had a total installed capacity of just about 161 megawatts today we have 57000 megawatts 37000 megawatts yeah this is huge my friends we have come a long way you look at the last 10 years um in 2014 and 15 prime minister modi had said that we should tap solar energy that could help us solve our constant electric problems electricity problems so in 2014 15 you look at the numbers and look at in just about 7 8 years we have come to that you could write this um solar power in india solar power in india solar power in india underline that first point installed capacity installed capacity dash 57 megawatts 57 megawatts mw megawatts dash as of june 2022 june 2022 next next point initial target was initial target was 20 hey 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 i think i made an error i am so sorry um 57 i said megawatts no please it is gigawatts i am so sorry that's a blunder sorry guys 57 gigawatts next next point initial target initial target Twenty megawatts. Initial target twenty megawatts by twenty twenty two. Twenty twenty two dash achieved achieved four years ahead in of schedule. Four years ahead of schedule. Four years ahead of schedule. next current installed capacity a uh, current target current target current target dash 100 me- gigawatts 100 gigawatts 100 gigawatts by 2022 so by this year end we would have had target by 100 gigawatts but currently it is 57 gigawatts now why there has been a sharp decrease in the you know why we haven't been able to fulfill these numbers the reasons are simple covid came in we lost two years we lost two years uh, you know we could have achieved 100 gigawatts but for the fact that entire economy was distracted was shut down on you know for a considerable amount of time okay last couple of points 42 solar parks 42 solar parks p r k s parks next i s a international solar alliance 
इंटरनेशनल सोलार अलायंस डैश हेड ऑफिस इन गुरगांव हेड ऑफिस इन गुरगांव डैश सेटअप अंडर और अदर गाइडेड बाय गाइडेड बाय वन सन इज इट वन सन वन वर्ल्ड वन ग्रिड वन ग्रिड स्लोगन ना वन सन वन वर्ड वन क्रिट वे इज आई इन क्रिट विच इज द फर्स्ट स्टेट इन इंडिया टू ऑफर टू डिस्ट्रीब्यूट सीड्स टू फार्मर्स वाई आर ब्लॉक चेन टेक्नोलॉजी नो दिस इज ए न्यू टेक्नोलॉजी प्रिटी पॉपुलर दीज डेज यू कुड राइट अ कपल ऑफ पॉइंट अबाउट दिस राइट distribution of seeds distribution of seeds via blockchain technology underline that right first point distribution of seeds distribution of seeds from government agencies government agencies or government agency producing seeds it is saying the producing seeds hey 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 what is seeds <laughs> i blended agency producing seeds to to distributors comma farmers distributors farmers and retailers it shall come in order and retailers so distribution of seed from government producing seed um, producing seeds agency seeds agencies seeds agencies for distribution for distribution to distributors comma retailers and farmers and farmers next point starts with starts with registering through registering through aadhar aadhar and mobile numbers and mobile numbers it's like pretty much like your ration shop that's it next farmers will be able to farmers will be able to complain or rather confirm that's a better word confirm confirm the the type confirm the type comma quantity or other confirm the type and quantity of seeds they receive of seeds they receive through their smartphones through their smartphones so they can complain look i got this kind of seeds not good so through one side download the app and everything i get seeds and everything and look uh, no one can take seeds from me from my seeds because it's all biometric registration was aadhar and all that aadhar is unique phone number is unique aadhar you know uh, aadhar number is unique yeah so biometric is unique so i can get seeds only if i prove that it's me who is eligible to receive seeds okay so what is happening here is that in case i do not get the uh, good quality of seeds i can complain through my smartphone okay um one more thing this reduces this will likely reduce this will like, likely reduce theft t h e f t theft 
by making the entire seed distribution process by making the entire seed distribution process seed distribution process transparent 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 by eliminating middlemen middlemen so if i am a farmer i can directly go and collect the you know once my details are entered my other is checked my biometric and of course uh, what we say you know uh, the mobile number is checked everything if the match i am eligible to receive some amount of seeds and get the seeds no one else can manipulate my name and to get seeds so the middle person or the theft won't happen basically okay according to a report titled air quality and health in cities which country is uh, home to 18 of the 20 cities with the worst with the most severe increase in fine particulate pollutants like pm pm is particulate matter 2.5 from 2010 to 2019 india my friends india has 18 of the world's 20 most polluted cities or the cities with more than pm of 2.5 so pm 2.5 okay is a benchmark here and india has 18 of 20 global cities my friends that's a reason cause for concern because air pollution leads to a lot of diseases and last year about 1.7 million people that is 17 lakh people died of disease or complications arising from air pollution 17 lakh people my friends okay worldwide 17 lakh people lost their lives because of air pollution okay so india has 18 of 20 cities and 20 41 of 50 cities and 41 of 50 cities the top 50 cities top 20 may 18 top 50 we have 41 so there is a lot of big numbers between 30 and 50. They are mostly from India. Most of the cities are from India. So there are a lot of reasons. So the population is exploding. Vehicle population is rising. Industrial development is going up. So there are a lot of pollutants in the air. Of course, the other reasons bring like surface temperatures rising every year. Yeah. Which Indian state started the Vidya Rath school on wheels a project aimed at imparting elementary education to economically challenged persons you know kids so assam has launched this you could write this basically vidyarath dash oh, school on wheels school on wheels underline that first point first point provides access provides access a double c e double s access to poor children, to poor children, poor means economically vulnerable children, economically disadvantaged children, okay, poor children, for 10 months, for 10 months, for 10 months, for 10 months, let's say I am an underprivileged child, for 10 months, I will get access to, you know, through education, through this Vidyarathi, this Van would go around and impart education to kids. Now, second thing is, you could write this. After ten months of, after ten months of elementary education, after ten months of elementary education, comma, the kids will be integrated or children will be integrated. Children will be integrated into. Children will be integrated into conventional system of education. Conventional system of education. Conventional system of education. So I am poor, desperate, uh, desperately poor. I don't have access to education. The government is providing me with Vidya Rath where I can, you know, instead of going to school, the school comes to me. Okay. So I can access this for free. And last point. Children. Under this scheme, 
children under this scheme will be provided with will be provided with free uniforms free uniform comma free textbooks free textbooks and and uh, midday meals midday meals food free food very important reason for kids to come to school a lot of parents would want their kids to have ex in fact almost all parents would like their kids to have access to education but sometimes desperate poverty would stop them from sending their kids because these kids if they work elsewhere they'll bring money to the family that would lead to that would help them generate some money to buy veggies uh, you know food basically but when parents realize that if i just send my child to school and then in school they will give a meal the parent has double reason for joy one food two education which every parent want there for the children you know for the child so the union cabinet received approved uh, sorry recently approved an interest subvention of 1.5% on short term agriculture loans up to rupees 3 lakh so what is interest subvention simply discount simply discount you write this interest subvention interest subvention means discount on interest rates discount on interest rates or subsidized interest rate subsidized interest rates subsidized interest rates okay next next point um i think i can give you more points than just uh, the next point yeah let's right i thought of giving only two what is this and what outlay is required right next point an additional outlay an additional outlay of rupees 35000 crore of rupees 35000 crore is being provided is being provided toward interest subvention toward interest subvention scheme in the current financial year in the current financial year so it requires another 35000 crore next point this money will be provided to this money will be provided to private sector banks private sector banks comma public sector banks public sector banks comma regional rural banks comma credit rather agriculture cooperative societies agriculture cooperative societies comma etc etc there will be this also includes small finance banks and all that etc okay next point these will push this will push these banking entities these banking entities to lend to lend 3 lakh rupees to farmers to farmers to a farmer to a farmer to provide 3 lakh rupees to a farmer and increase and increase increase overall and increase overall agricultural credit agricultural credit agricultural credit 
लास्ट पॉइंट एन एडिशनल थ्री परसेंट नो 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 यू राइट दिस करेंटली करेंटली रुपीज थ्री लैख लोन अमाउंट करेंटली लोन ऑफ रुपीज थ्री लैख एट सेवन परसेंट इंटरेस्ट एट सेवन परसेंट इंटरेस्ट एट सेवन परसेंट इंटरेस्ट is being is being extended to is being extended to agriculture and and al and allied activities allied allied activities and allied activities like animal husbandry growing livestock yeah poultry pig goat sheep cattle buffalo like that animal husbandry and floriculture floriculture aquaculture floriculture horticulture stuff like that hmm? next last point this is important an additional 3% an additional 3% subvention an additional 3% subvention will be given to farmers will be given to farmers for prompt for prompt and timely and timely repayment for prompt and timely repayment repayment full stop this this extra subvention is called prompt prompt p r o m p t prompt repayment incentive prompt repayment incentive okay means i am a farmer i go to a bank i take a loan okay the government says banks please lend to farmers like bharat okay so the bank needs money to lend and the money is being provided by the central government this time 35000 crore rupees so the money comes to the banks the banks lend to people like me and the government says okay bharat you know we will lend you at 7% it's already discounted 7% but then if you make all the repayments that is emis and all that on time we will give you an additional 3% discount 7% loan at already see i am taking at 7% which is very very less than what the market would charge for a personal loan so i get at 7% then the government says bhaiya yeah, you take can take another 3% you know interest subvention we'll give you another 3% provided you make all the payments on time so if i am prompt honest and i make all the payments on time i would have to pay only 4% interest so effectively the government of india is subsidizing agricultural loans or by offering them at just 4% offering at them at 4% yes 4% per annum this is how it is this is how it is so Name the parenting app that focuses on child health and that was recently launched by the Union Health Ministry. Palan thousand. Palan means upbringing, taking, rearing a child. Okay. If you want to write this, I can give you a couple of points. Please write this first under Palan thousand. So what does thousand mean? Right. First point. First thousand days. First thousand days. 
of a child's life of a child's life first thousand days of a child's life are significantly important are greatly important for the child's physical for the child's physical comma emotional and mental development physical comma emotional and physical development sorry physical emotional and mental development next see this is when the brain development happens when the physical development happens okay next the app provides the app provides advice to advice to caregivers caregivers c a r e g i v e r s caregivers in brackets like mothers like mothers about what they can do about what they can do in their everyday routine in their everyday routine and and help resolve help resolve help resolve the doubts of parents the doubts of caregivers doubts of parents or caregivers okay so i may have a question once i download the app okay in this situation what should i do as a parent what should i do so the app provides me information this would take care of the health mental health physical health of the child okay and this is this kind of care plays a significant role in reducing mortality of a child okay last point you could write india has reduced india has reduced child mortality up to age of 5 child mortality from 45 from 45 deaths per 1000 live births in 2014 to 35 deaths 35 deaths per 1000 live births in 2019 in 2019 that's lakhs of children saved yes thousand you think about the population growth in one year so for every thousand we are saving 10 kids that's a good thing we need to reduce this further down but then there's a process it takes time from 45 it's gone on to 35 in 5 years so hopefully this goes further down from here yeah which northeastern state successfully launched a pilot project drone service from sepa to shyang tajo named medicine from the sky arunachal pradesh has done this is what is basically you know um called last mile connectivity last mile connectivity so today because a lot of people live in hilly areas inaccessible in remote inaccessible areas they are being deprived of access to basic health care medicines and all that stuff so drones can do the work for us drones can do the work for us so we are enabling we are using technology to be able to connect uh, you know um people living in remote areas to the most advanced medical technology most med, med, most advanced medical care Arunachal Pradesh has taken a step. This will spread across the country now. Okay. For strengthening the registries of health professionals and health facilities, which institution or ministry has announced performance-based fund allocation to states and union territories? The National Health Authority. 
द नेशनल हेल्थ अथॉरिटी एडमिनिस्टर्स और गाइड्स यू नो आयुष्मान भारत नेशनल हेल्थ अथॉरिटी ओवरसीज आयुष्मान भारत बेसिकली यू कुड से यूनिवर्सल सोशल इंश्योरेंस यूनिवर्सल इंश्योरेंस स्कीम या हेल्थ केयर स्कीम यूनिवर्सल हेल्थ केयर एंड सोशल इंश्योरेंस स्कीम सो फैमिली मेंबर ऑफ अ फैमिली कैन एक्सेस हेल्थ केयर और मेडिकल एक्सपेंसिस अप टू फाइव लाख रुपीज अंडर द स्कीम हु इज अ सीईओ ऑफ दिस राम सेवक शर्मा दिस गाई इज एक्स चेयरपर्सन ऑफ ट्राई राम सेवक शर्मा नीति आयोग द सीईओ इज परमेश्वरन अयर परमेश्वरन अयर परमेश्वरन अयर फिनेंस कमीशन फिनेंस कमीशन देर इज नो करंटली देर इज नो फिनेंस कमीशन द सिक्सटीन विल बी सेटअप सून सिक्सटीन फाइनेंस कमीशन विल बी सेटअप सून But the fifteenth finance commission was headed by Nand Kishore Singh. Nand Kishore Singh. Nand Kishore Singh. And coming to the Ministry of Women and Child Development, it is headed by Smriti Irani. Smriti Irani. Smriti Irani also heads another ministry. She heads the Ministry of Minority Affairs. This is a very very important ministry in India, Ministry of Minority Affairs. I think she is the first Parsi to head this ministry. Okay, Minority Affairs. So, next, the so minority you have Christians, Hindus, um, sorry, Christians. You have Muslims, you have Jains, you have Buddhists, you have Sikhs, Parsis. All these Baha'is, they all come under minorities in India. Medical Council of India. There is no organization called Medical Council of India. It is now being substituted by, replaced by National Medical Commission. Please write this. Medical Council of India has been replaced by, has been replaced by, replaced by National Medical Council, National Medical Commission. Sorry, National Medical Commission. Dash chairperson is Doctor Suresh. चंद्र शर्मा डॉक्टर सुरेश चंद्र शर्मा विच इज द फर्स्ट कंट्री टू मेक पीरियड प्रोडक्ट्स एंड टैंपन्स दट इज टैंपन्स एंड पैड्स सैनिटरी पैड्स फ्री फॉर ऑल यूके वेरी गुड मूव वेरी वेरी गुड मूव See, this is one of the reason why a lot of kids in India don't come to school. Children of lower classes, lower economic classes, they worry a lot because most schools in India lack, you know, toilet facilities, especially for the girl child. And this, coupled with the fact that most kids, most girl children do not have access to sanitary pads, which are more hygienic than use of cloth and. Uh, some communities or some parts of india where people are desperately poor they use coconut husk ash coconut husk is pushed into you know um, you know uh, the vagina which would absorb uh, blood through bleeding when uh, at the time of periods see this leads to infection of the kid yeah this is a very sad thing this is this can lead to a lot of complications like urinary tract infection and all so somewhere down the line a lot of ngos government of india state governments are pushing you know um, for free you know, uh, distribution or rather subsidized distribution of the pads sanitary pads at subsidized rates in schools in you know um, especially in those places where where you know economically vulnerable people live okay so This is a good thing. I mean, we need to take care of our children. It's yeah. So if there are sanitary pads, if there are clean hygienic toilets, yeah, where the kids can you know go for a change. So the idea is that kids won't sit at home. They can come to school, yeah, during the critical period um, of menses and all, and they can 
get access to education. This is sadly um, not happening widely in India, but yeah, we are moving in that direction. Hopefully things change for better for our kids. Yeah. So, um, you know, um, some places you find not UK, you find Scotland. Scotland is a part of the United Kingdom. So we should write UK. Okay. Um, New Zealand, Ireland, Iceland, Spain. I usually I don't, I give the names of the prime ministers, currency, capital, no. Chalo, we'll just write the name of the prime ministers. New Zealand, um, Jacinda Ardern. Jacinda Ardern is the prime minister. Okay. Ireland. In Ireland, they don't use the term prime minister. They use a term called Tao Siege. This is the name of the office or the prime minister of that country. We say prime minister, they say the head of the government is Tao Siege. Okay. Um, it is uh, Mikkel Martin. It's always confusing. Yeah. These Irish names are generally confusing. Okay. Mikkel Martin. This is spelling. Mikkel Martin. Yeah. Iceland. The Prime Minister is Catherine Jacobs Dottir. Jacobs Dottir. Catherine Jacobs Dottir. Okay. It's an island. You know what? The good the cool there is a cool thing about Iceland. It's ice, of course, it's pretty cold. <laughs> I know it's a bad joke, but more importantly, there's a very, very cool fact about Iceland. I learned this way back, um, I mean, when I was a school kid, actually. This is probably the only country in the world where the land is increasing, land size is increasing. You may wonder, how could land increase? See, this country has a lot of volcanic islands, along, especially along the shore. Okay, so when these volcanic mountains erupt there are explosions lava pops out and flows down the hills slopes onto the the coastal areas so the lava solidifies and extends the land into the sea okay so this land this country's land is actually rising if you you can see this in hawaii in america that's also but that's not on such a large scale iceland it's on a large scale yeah which asset management company, asset management company is AMC Mutual Fund, is scheduled to launch India's first scheme to that offers exposure to gold and silver via a single fund. A lot of people these days invest in mutual funds. Mutual funds are of different types. There are debt mutual funds, equity mutual funds, bullion mutual funds, bullion is gold and silver. Okay. So equity mutual funds are like, you know, they invest in shares. Now you may wonder what is a mutual fund. See, as an individual, I have pretty limited investment capacity across a range of products. Like for example, let's say I have one lakh rupees with me. I want to invest. Someone's, I, 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 let's say I want to buy the shares of X company, which is pretty good. So. I put 1 lakh rupees into that company's shares and I would expect it to rise, build wealth for me. But let's say unfortunately the company collapses, I would lose my money. There's always a danger of losing money. So a mutual fund comes into play here. A mutual fund does this. What a mutual fund does for us is it collects money from me. From this person, there is no one around in this room. Okay, it's a large room but there is no one here. The 10 people here, mutual fund collects money from all 10 of us. We invest in a mutual fund. What a mutual fund does is, it invests the same money collected from hundreds, thousands of investors like me in a range of companies, into buying shares of range of companies, sometimes tens, hundreds, a few hundred and all that. So here the risk is spread, not one company like I, in my case. But the risk is spread across a range of companies. So if there is a loss from any of one of the investments, one of the companies, 
the loss can be compensated with profits from other investments other companies that's how it is so it's a mutual fund yours and mine fund that mutual fund so investing in gold investing in silver is always a dicey thing you know uh, people buy gold as a hedge in india of course gold has a different value maybe in the next class i'll tell you why gold is so important okay why gold is important why is it so uh, why is it seen as a, seen as a you know a scarce commodity what makes it so valuable i'll i'll 100% give you a talk on you know in the next class maybe on th thursday when, when you have a class i'll give you a talk on gold I love discussing these kinds of things. These are all ordinary things. So important things are like the story behind the story. So um, this kind of fund is going to say, uh, you know, take, collect money from us and invest in gold and silver. Now people always talk about gold as being a good thing, good investment. Uh, I'm not a great fan of gold. Uh, I'm not a great fan of silver. I'm not a great fan of anything except uh, sharing learning. I'm just kidding. So the thing here is this, they invest on our behalf in gold and silver, but in the last one year, the gold, the price of gold has gone down by 3% and the price of silver has gone down by 20%. I'm not kidding. You could look it up. Last one year, the price of gold has gone down by 3%. If you're invested, you know, uh, let's say X amount, it would be minus 3% today. X amount in gold, the value of the gold would be minus 3% today and average. Okay. And, um, if it's silver, it would have gone down by 20%. So it's a bad idea. Okay. But then since the economy is going down, people want, want, and inflation is going up, people would want to buy gold so that, you know, instead of putting money, keeping cash in the pocket where the, 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 the inflation will only reduce the purchasing power. I will buy gold, which will take care of my future. Okay, I can sell gold at any time and its value won't decreases the idea. But in the last one, you have seen that the value has decreased actually. Okay. Now, another thing is, um, silver's demand may rise because um, there has been an explosion in the industrial usage of silver. Okay. Silver is used in a very big way in industry. Smartphones, electronic equipment, all carry silver inside. Okay, we will discuss this in the next class. So, Edelweiss is coming out, coming out with this fund called ETF, Exchange Traded Fund, which will put money in gold and silver for you. But I just look it up. In the last one year, price of gold has gone down by 3%. Um, the returns on gold has gone down by 3% and silver by 20%. 19.9%, make it 20%. Okay. Name the industry leader who's, um, who recently announced an undisclosed investment into a startup named Goodfellows that offers companionship to senior citizens as a service. Now, this companionship is very different from what most people have come to understand. See, through this startup, this startup has been, is being promoted by a person called Shantanu Naidu. He works as a general manager in the office of Ratan Tata, in the office of Ratan Tata. So what is this startup about? It hires, hires young people with pretty good emotional intelligence and pretty good attitude. Okay. People need to have a very healthy attitude. People need to have a very high emotional intelligence. People also need to have empathy, being able to relate to others, being able to not fully feel the pain, but yes, empathize with them. Yeah, things happen. Things go bad. Yeah, like that. Not be dismissive. No, no, not that. People who are empathetic, people who have great emotional intelligence and people who are young and willing to do uh, build a relationship with elderly persons so they would be put in touch with someone okay uh, some senior citizen who's um, who needs that kind of friendship so these young people will develop a friendship a deep abiding friendship with old people elder citizens senior citizens and um, they kind of not only build a friendship will also be able to do small tasks like you know fetching groceries and all that stuff small things basically 
essential to make life easy for the elderly people who feel lonely, who feel left out. Sometimes, you know, the spouse dies. Sometimes children don't take care of. Sometimes they do not have children. So a lot of things go into making life difficult for elderly persons. Yeah. So, Ratan Tata is invested in good fellows. Okay. There is a Hollywood movie, nothing to do with this kind of idea, called Good Fella. Good Fellas. Watch it. It's a nice gangster film. It is very different from this. Okay. Nanda Nilakani is a co promoter of, um, you know, he is a co promoter, co founder of Infosys. Infosys. And if I'm not wrong, TV Mohanda Spy is a, was the first employee of Infosys. He retired as the chief of HR at Infosys. Yeah. And um, of course, you know one and two. Yeah. Scientists of which country have recently created the world's first synthetic embryo using just stem cells without sperm. Israeli scientists have done this. Now, without sperm is a major breakthrough. Okay. An embryo without is without sperm is unthinkable. It was unthinkable till recently. But what are stem cells? Stem cells are blank cells. Okay. Let's say this screen is blank. Okay. This screen is blank. I don't have paper. Okay. This screen is blank. Okay. Now you can write whatever you want to write, isn't it? Yes. You can fill the board with what you write. Similarly, stems are stem cells are blank cells which can be programmed into any other cell means they can be turned into liver cells pancreatic cells or stomach cells or any heart tissue whatever that is what they are so they're blank cells and they can be programmed through dna in nucleus and all that through you know uh, by you know and to turn into whatever we want them to turn into so now they are using stem cells to create embryos without sperm Crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Let's look at Israeli Prime Minister. The new guy. Israeli Prime Minister is Yair Lapid. He's the new Prime Minister of Israel. He's been there for a couple of months now. Okay. South Korea is has a new president, Yoon Suk Yol. Yoon Suk Yol. Okay. Yeah. Australia, Anthony Albanese. Anthony Albanese. Anthony Albanese. BB, my story, will be published in chat number and it's a memoir. How do you pronounce this? You can say memoir. Jesse Lika here. As you see it on the screen. But you can also pro pronounce it as memoir. Memoir. That's the right pronunciation. Memoir. It's a collection of memories. Not strictly an autobiography in any order, but it's a collection of memories. That's memoir. BB. That's BB. It's the nickname of Benjamin Netanyahu. He was the Prime Minister of Israel between 1996 and 1999 and 2009 to 2021 he was the prime minister 15 years and that ladies and gentlemen makes him the longest serving israeli prime minister longest serving israeli prime minister okay he's in opposition now he's a leader of opposition in uh, israel of course yeah imam ali rahman is the president of Tajikistan. Tajikistan. Mohammad Ibrahim Shatir. This guy is the Prime Minister of Palestine. Prime Minister of Palestine. Ibrahim Mohammad Soli. Maldives. President of Maldives. President of Maldives, Ibrahim Rezi, Iranian Prime Minister, President,
ایران Nidan, India's first portal on arrested narcotic offenders, we need this kind of stuff, has become operational. It stands for National Integrated Database on Arrested Na Narco Offenders. Yeah. These are the most worst kind of criminals. They are endangering the lives of millions of Indian men, women and children, my friends. Yeah. By getting them, you know, drug, making them drug addicts. Which company shareholders recently approved the reappointment of Gopal Vittal as managing director of the company for a period of five years? Bharti Airtel. Bharti Airtel. He has been there for last five years, more than five years, and he is now going to be there for another five years. Okay. Bharti Airtel. BSNL Reliance Geo. I think in the last class we discussed all the names. Yeah. Aditya Birla Group is. The chairperson is K.M. Birla. He is a chartered accountant and he is an MBA from London Business School. London Business School. Yeah. Kumar Mangalam Birla. Aditya Birla owns companies like Hindalco, which is Hindustan Aluminium Company. You have Grasim. You have, uh, what is that, um, I think Ultra Tech. They have... Uh, you know they have a partnership in Vodafone idea that idea you see there it's owned by it's Aditya Birla okay they are one of the largest makers of what is it uh, carbon yeah carbon in the world and um, it also owns a lot of apparel brands like pantaloons it owns pantaloons Alan Solly, Van Usen, Peter England you know uh, Louis Philip they are all owned by Aditya Birla through a group company called Madura Garments. Okay. Yeah. Aksh, you know, let's look at BSNL, Bharat Sanchan Nigam Limited, recently received 1.64 lakh rupees from the government of India. And they have said that um, we are going to strengthen our base, in, especially in places where we are not strong. And this will also help us roll out with 5G. BSNL is run by, if I'm not wrong, Praveen Purwar, P-U-R-W-A-R, Purwar. That's about it. Have a lot of fun. Have a lot of fun. And please make sure that um, you stay curious, learn, spend five minutes on a topic of your choice, read. When you read, don't understand, no problem. Don't remember, never, never mind that. Just spend. Five to 15 minutes is a good time to spend. Yeah. And in my next session, I'm going to discuss gold. Next session will be on, I'll spend 5-10 minutes on gold. Okay. Thank you for being here. Have a lot of fun. Thank you.